Hi everyone and welcome back to our unit on databases. In today's lesson we're going to take a look at using templates in FileMaker Pro 5.5. So first let's open up FileMaker 5.5 and when you do that one of the options that we have is to create a new file using a template. So FileMaker Pro has a number of different ones that we can select from. You can use any of these and possibly modify these or even build your own custom template for a business application or any application that's required. We're going to take a look at the inventory template. So we're going to click OK, and we'll call this Inventory Practice Database. We'll save it, let's view. So this is what we get for the view. I'm just going to change the size. I'm going to zoom in. And gives us a little information about the template. I'm going to click on form and this is what the inventory template looks like. It has a number of predefined fields that we can enter in our field data. Uh, we can change those if we wish. If we want to take a look at the details behind how they built this, we can go down at the bottom here and click on this arrow down. And we can go to Layout. And when we go to Layout, you can see that the view changes slightly. And what I can do is I can change what goes inside this field. I've got a number of different fields that have already been defined. So I could use any one of those. And I could change the title here as well. I could do the same for this and so on. I'm just going to cancel this. That's in layout mode. If I go down to the bottom here, I'm going to go back to browse mode. And I'm going to click on new. So what we can do is enter information about inventory such as location. If I click on this area, it tells me in a drop-down menu that the inventory is located on the first floor, second floor, the lab, the storage area, or I can edit this list. So if I click on edit, it shows me here that I could change any of these. And for instance, I could call location building A, if we had a campus of buildings, or we could call it building B, or we could call it building C. If I click OK, now if I go and click on this box, you can see that those are my options, and I can select these when I'm filling in each record, which will save me a lot of time from typing. As well, it saves from making mistakes when it comes to typing in entries. If I click on category, again someone's already defined these from a drop down menu as computer, copier, fax, furniture, printer, or again I can edit these and go in and change these to suit my needs, whatever they might be. If I click on cancel, Serial number, if I click on that, I don't get a drop down menu. Serial number is something that's very specific, so there isn't really a drop down menu that would be suited for this, so we just have to enter in that information. Cost is a dollar value. Date purchased would be a uh, date in the format of month, day, and year. Age in years ends up being a calculation that's done. We could also enter in a picture and an item name as well. 
So I can use this form to enter in information. Or like I said, I could go down to this menu and go to Layout, and I could change what's inside this template. I'm going to stay in Browse Mode, and let's just put in some information. Let's just say the inventory item is located in Building A, and let's say that it's a computer in Building A, and it has a serial number. We'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Its cost is $500. And the date purchased, we'll say, is in the month 09. The day is the 10th day of the month and in 2013. Now, notice that age in years comes out to be zero. If I go back here and change this date, let's change it to 2010, and we'll see what happens with age and years. Hit enter. You can see that age and years has changed to three. So somewhere in this template, it does a calculation between the date purchased and today's date and calculates the age of the item in years. Notes, we can put in whatever we wish. This computer is a Dell laptop. And as I mentioned, if we wish, we could put in a picture and an item number. So if we look over on the left-hand side here, this is our first record. And if I want to take a look at another item, another piece of inventory, I can click on New. And let's say this time we're in Building B this item and let's say it's a printer and the serial number is six seven eight nine and the cost of this we'll say is three hundred and fifty dollars and the date that we purchased this we'll say is the month of January 15th of January, and we'll say in 2009. Again, you can see that the template has calculated the age of the item in years. And we'll say this printer is an Epson LaserJet printer. And again, we can put in item, we can put in a picture of this as well. If I click on new, takes me to my next inventory item. Now they've built in buttons here that we can use that just really help us maneuver from record to record. We could click on these here as well, but these buttons are here. And we can use those to find different things. Now if I go to the top here and click on list, it puts all the information in list form and includes not all the information from the form, but it just selected certain pieces of information. Location, category, the item, which we did not identify, the date, it was purchased and the cost of the item. So we might want to use this list for instance for anyone who's doing a budget for the company. If we take a look at the last one and click on reports, it gives us a number of options. 
One of the options is an inventory summary. So if I click on this, again, what they've done when they built this report is they've listed the item location, the serial number, the date purchased, the age of the item, and the cost of the item. And what the report can do is take all of the items in inventory and add the value of those items up. So someone else in uh, finance, someone who's doing a budget for the company, may use this information if they're calculating um, how much it may cost to double the size of all of their inventory items or if they need to change some of their inventory items. So different reports may be used by different individuals. If I click on the side here, click continue and I go back to form. We can go back to see the records that we've entered in. That's just a quick Overview of using a template in FileMaker Pro 5.5. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon.